Hi everybody. It's good to see everyone. If uh, uh, any, virtually, looking forward to seeing you all in uh, in the flesh and in real life. I'm very excited about um, this uh, conversation that we're going to have. I'm very excited to have you guys in the second edition of the Now series. Um, last year we had you guys as the uh, focal point of uh, UAE Now at Art Dubai and. Um, this year, we were going to have you guys as a part of um, Gulf Now. And um, unfortunately, to, due to all of the circumstances, uh, we weren't able to have the physical reality of um, your space come to life. But um, here we are, and we're uh, having a more intimate conversation around Beit 15 and, and getting to know Beit 15. Um, I'd like to introduce the founding members Hashim, Metha, and Afa, um, and uh, um, also briefly about Beit 15. Beit 15 is an artist-run uh, space. It is uh, a beating heart in Abu Dhabi that uh, has really like pumped a very new energy into the city, um, where we ha now have the space where we can get together and uh, um, uh, exist in this uh, uh, space that's not bound to anything outside of uh, just creative justice, let's say. Um, with that said, I would like to uh, jump right into to some of my questions and um, begin to talk about um, Beit 15 uh, as this like, satellite space that has really um, added to the conversation when it comes to um, the arts ecosystem in the UAE. Uh, thank you for being here, guys. Um, is there anything you guys want to jump into, or should I start with a question? Um, I have in mind uh, this sense of um, maybe taking it back. If you guys can can start discussing how the idea came came to life, when it came to life, what your expectations were, and um, and how um, um, how we can um, uh, begin to sort of like draw out the beginnings of Beit 15 and where we're at um, today with Beit 15. So let me just uh, <laughs> start. So um, um, me, Afran. So first of all, like me and Hashel had like we knew each other like way back. Um, um, and and I, I, I do believe that like a lot of our colleague artists did have that idea of having a space um, um, that they could work um, um, from and having like that community, but um, it wasn't actually like realized. I, I, I know me and Hassel had meetings before. I know Afra even before we meet Afra had like a thought of having uh, such a space. Um, but I think Hashel can can start by telling the story how we all got together. Some like he knew Afra before I did, and then the so point. we were all kind of <laughs> yeah, yeah. We were we were all kind of like going back and forth, and, like with this idea. But like, yeah, Hashel, if you can just explain how it got all linked since uh, how you grew <laughs> this together. Yeah, you introduced me to Afra, and then like it all. Uh, went from there yeah i mean uh bet 15 started almost three years ago but the idea was always floating uh i've, I've had as metha mentioned several meetings with her and other people and um and that didn't actually come to um, uh, live due to different uh, circumstances and then during a uh, CIF program, Sheikh uh, Asama uh, Fellowship for Emerging Artists, uh, we had a trip to the States and th that's where I met Afra. She was graduating from, um, her, uh, from RISD with her MFA program in painting. And uh, the faculty like put us in touch together and we started speaking in the States and as soon as I was like, when you come back, reach out, I'm here. And that's how it started. Uh, one of the many reasons that, yani, um, when Meth and I were looking, 
we're like actually looking into warehouses, like getting it more commercial, so like getting licenses and stuff. And that was not really what we were um, trying to achieve. And we thought like we're losing the actual uh, cause that's driving this. And then uh, we met uh, at the Sieve Studios uh, uh, right before we finished the program. I think. Yeah, I yeah. Like, uh, it was, it was towards the end of the program. That's, uh, I remember when Afra was back from the U.S. and I first met her actually yeah. at the studio there. Yeah. And, and we had our first meeting there. Um, yeah, and uh, at that time also, uh, I was kind of like looking or, or taking care of Mohammed's Mazur'i uh, 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 house, which is currently Beit 15. He was in Egypt and um, I was like back and forth, just cleaning, um, sending him stuff that he needed. Um, and then when he decided that he will relocate uh, officially in Cairo, I told him, I have this idea and how about we transfer the lease from you to, uh, to me. And that's how it all started. And, uh, and as soon as we signed the lease with Nawaf, uh, we started like designing the walls, breaking the tiles, renovating, starting the library, and it kept going uh, from there. How much? Uh, yani, how 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 much did you guys expect for this to happen? Like in this way? Like was it? Um, did you guys draw this out, and then uh, did it go according to plan, or was it something that just? kind of happened, you know, happened very naturally or over overnight somehow, like a, as, a, as a miracle. Like, I think also maybe if you can elaborate a little bit on the history of the house, uh, that's, a, that's a very interesting point um, to also get to know sort of like the soul uh, and energy of the space, which is way too deep. I mean, I think that it, it all happened very organically, I would say. Um, we did, I mean, we came together, we all had ideas, we all knew that the one thing that like sort of like brought us all together is the need for studio spaces, wanting to, to work alongside other artists. So this yeah, method of working almost collectively, but with it, like in a space, not necessarily collectively as um, an artist group. Um, and I think that that's basically, that was our, our, our motive. And um, the minute we got the villa, um, like bit 15, starting with setting up our studios, I think everything just sort of like unfolded from there. And whatever we're presented with, we had to like deal with at the time because um, I mean, also part of us renting the house was also in agreement with Nawaf, like what Hashil was saying earlier that they wanted to, uh, they were thinking of commercial licenses, and that's also a conversation that we had at the beginning because we didn't know how to sort of like um, roll this out, you know, how, how are we presenting this, uh, does that mean we can I don't know, like sell stuff out of our library, <laughs> have small products, tote bags. <laughs> but um, I mean, it, it was all about priorities. The priority was having a space and, and that meant us having an agreement with Nawaf and just, you know, existing. Um, and I think, yeah, it, it just moved on from there. Taban. The house is very special and I think it's precious to all of us. And it's one of the reasons why we we ended up naming it Beit 15. We had a lot of discussions and conversations at the beginning of like, what do we name it? What are we calling it? And we came up with all of these different like acronyms of our names or like elastics or like what it means and so and so. But then we realized that, you know, going back, thinking about the history of the house itself, uh, it came with a narrative. It came with its own history and, and we couldn't, um, the house number is 15 in, in the block, in the residential block, it's house number 15. So we felt like it's very important to keep it at that because we do not want to strip it from its own identity. And that identity um, includes it being um, owned by the late Mohammed Al-Janahi, who's a known um, 
ar- uh, actor and like my my family my mother my aunts used to watch the tv s- series in the 70s and 80s and um his son who is also a film producer and director is our current landlord and then um it was also uh, the live and work space for uh, Muhammad Al Mazrui, who's an amazing artist in the UAE, and his painting is uh, behind you. <laughs> 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 Speaking of, um, yeah. So I mean, just just you know, having a space that comes with all of that energy, you know, it's just like uh, we inherited this and took it on it came with that vibe it came with that energy like it was there all we had to do is like you know exist within it yeah keep it alive in a sense i think it's very interesting to inherit a history of like uh creative juice and to create that fluidity you know it's like it was there it was already ready uh and it was ready almost to take on its uh, its third iteration of what it was going to be for what type of creative um, with that said, I, I'm very curious to know, Annie, what that first meeting of Big 15 looked like. You know, like what what did you guys have in mind? What did you what did you guys think about when when uh, Nahet like Annie opening up uh, uh, your your doors to the public? Like, did you like? And and I I always Annie, I'm always very grateful for Big 15 because Big 15 not only introduced me to wonderful people outside of you guys but it introduced me to the three of you who are you know vital uh, forces in my life and and uh, i i can't i cannot imagine the Abu Dhabi landscape without bit 15 in it like in its exact location in its place and space and um, and just to see how from you know you guys have you guys have um, existed for over three years and um, i'm just curious to see you know if we were to go back to that first meeting, where were you guys at? Uh, uh, what did you guys imagine? Um, and maybe we can tie in uh, the first exhibition and, and sort of the intentions of that first exhibition. Oh, but then, and after that, like we can start to really uh, move into uh, sort of details and, and flesh out um, Bait 15 on a, on a more personal note, I think. Um, but yeah, so if we could start with that, like, you know, what, what, were, what were the hopes and dreams of uh, Bait 15 in its third iteration as a, uh, you know, as a one-year-old, let's say? At the beginning, the, the motive and the um, main intentions actually have a community within us. So have like me working at home, Metha at home and Afra at home and she just uh, returned back from um, the States. So we needed like a community. It wasn't really about like putting shows and doing all of the public programming. It was just like actually building a small community for ourselves. And I think it took us like about six months uh, between construction and uh, renovation and storage and all of that until we actually felt we are settled in our own studios and then um, we kind of like okay let's open up the the space to uh, to the community and back to the name where Afra was mentioning uh, the different names I think also the word bait uh, is kind of um, Bait in Arabic is a house, but also in English, the, um, the, uh, the how you say it, the bait, <laughs> like for the fish to, you know, to attract, <laughs> attract more people. So that was like our intention. Yeah, we, to, there was a conversation about, about that. About that, like how do we like engage the public because we will be the first and we want this community to grow even much bigger. And earlier, earlier, way before uh, like Bait 15 took off, we actually started as five members. We had uh, two members who decided to relocate to the States, Tony Bragg and uh, Chris Mortson. And I, like without them and all of the um, critical thinking that we had at the beginning, I think that's very important to, to mention that. But uh, uh, you know, now it's been like three years and um, 
we're going to our fourth year, right? And yeah. uh, since then, we've had shows, music nights, uh, workshops. Um, yeah. Artists yeah. And at the same TV. time, we wanted it to be that diverse. We didn't want like I like we're three of like the three of us are visual artists, and and we work with paint, we work with sculptures. But at the same time, we wanted to include like a, a you know uh, the community we wanted to include writers we wanted to include filmmakers we wanted this to be like a create like you know um, um, just a space for creative people to come and just you know hang out and 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 um, and talk and you know and uh, that that was like the the, the thought that we started with um, um, in that first meeting that we had we wanted this to be just as diverse as, as possible and include like um, um, as many creatives as possible, you know, uh, and engage them. So, yeah. Also going back to Munira's question, like where did, where did that first meeting happen? And what do you, and, and I, I have a very like <laughs> a concrete sort of like image of us uh, sitting, I don't know if you guys remember this, but we were yeah. sitting under the stairs, which is now, closed and storage but mm -hmm. uh, under this the space Munira where we have um, a magic door which is storage that's actually the space under the staircase and there was one sofa under the stairs that is right now in our library that was one sofa and all of us five had to sit on that one sofa and have a conversation. We were so trying. That was the only furniture, right? Because that was the only <laughs> furniture in the space. And we sat down, and I remember we had like post-its on the wall of different names, different like numbers, and different, you know. And um, I think that th that was a very important sort of like moment thinking about how we kind of like all squeezed into the sofa trying to have a meeting, you know, or a discussion. Um, but also, um, I think, uh, I think I, I lost my, my, <laughs> my thread of thought, but. Going, going yeah. back to what you said, Afra, like regarding the names, I, I also remember like, um, um, at some point, like we actually did not want to include like part of our names or anything that has to do with us personally, because like we, when we started this, we know that like, you know, maybe after like three, four, five years, I'm not going to be here. Probably like, I'm going to really relocate. Like we didn't want this space to be about like us individually. We want it to be like a space for the community. And we yeah. didn't want like people to associate the space as, you know, Afra Hashel and made his space. Yeah, it's Afra and Hashel made his studio. No, it's like a space that you know, open for for everyone basically. So um, I remember that conversation very well. And like we, it's like no, we're we, you know, it's it's not about us. It's not about like have you know, a person like having like that space um, um, for us personally. Yes, we have our studios there, but it's open for also the public and um, yeah. And I think one of the main, sorry. No, 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 it's okay, go ahead, Hashid. I just remembered my thoughts, so I'm gonna come back to it. One of our main thoughts, like when we actually got together is, uh, what's our role as artists to, uh, you know, how are we going to be able to contribute to the different uh, discussion that is happening around us? As you know, like, um, there are like few examples of, an artist run spaces uh, in the region, but not, yeah, I mean, the last one was, I think, the Plying House. Oh, yeah. uh, and since then, um, you know, no one has been thinking in that term. And that was also a different model from us. It was more of a collective, it was more like closed uh, uh, discussion happening. Uh, so what we wanted here, like actually, find a way to contribute as we all return like from our studies abroad and be able to participate and engage, you know, there, therefore there is like a dialogue, then there is progress. Uh, and that was like one of the main ideas where like we, we, when we start talking about the public programming and the gallery space, like we can walk you through like 
our small like um, narrative. Yeah, perfect. Go ahead. Yeah, I think that's what that's what uh, actually that's what I was gonna say. I was gonna say that <laughs> I love this how like every and yeah, yeah, I love it. Um, yeah, I was just gonna point out that when we had these discussions, we actually started to think. Well, we did a bit of research. So I was. Um, I remember I traveled to New York after I came back for a while and I started looking at all these different artist run spaces and I had friends who introduced me to the people who run these spaces and I got to meet them and understand like, um, you know, how they exist within the ecosystem of the art, but also like how they function, who's their primary audience and, you know, I, trying to understand, but also like, we looked at examples like Hasha said in the region. We looked at, you know, the Flying House. We looked at, there was, um, at the time the show, uh, But They Cannot See Us was up. And so there was also in the book, they talked about Qasr al-Ramal. And I think that I thought, we all thought that these are important uh, moments to learn from and, and it is a continuum. It is not, because when the first press wrote about us, a lot of the questions we got on that first day of opening was, how do you feel being the first? How do you feel being the only ones? And, and, and I remember going crazy and like all of us looking at each other and we we're like, we're not the first and we're not the only ones. And, and we're like, not going to be the last We're ones. never going to be yeah. the first and only. And, and, and I remember saying like, we want to be the first of many. That's for sure. Absolutely. And I, and I feel like yani, you guys have been a catalyst towards, uh, towards this, towards this sort of thinking where, you know, whether people have realized um, these spaces or not, but somehow there's been like a push towards artist led, um, led spaces and artist run spaces because it's essential that like when yani, when we look at the spectrum of the arts here in the UAE, and this is something that I talk about often, it, it's it's a um, it's an extreme spectrum. You know, you we started with Venice, and then we from Venice decided on you know art fairs, and then uh, from that we moved on to um, museums, and then galleries, and then like there's like a massive gap, and then it's a like, uh, into the education system to create artists, but then then you have things like the Sheikh Salama Foundation um, Fellowship for Emerging Artists, and and that really sort of began to solidify a tonality within within artists. And what uh, what you guys have done uh, is is something that's superb. I think yeah, it, it, what you guys had in mind to separate yourselves from the space and for the space to speak on its own, it very much does. You know, like it is, uh, Beit Shifteen is like the, the house for all, you know, like anybody who has an idea, anybody who is creative, anybody who wants to think, like I've, I've spent plenty of time uh, in Beit Shifteen in the library space. I've met, uh, you know, people from different walks of life in bit 15, whether it was once or many times, um, and uh, through your public programming, like there, there's, a, your hand is felt, the three of you, your presence is felt, but in the way where it's not the, um, it, it's not any, it's not about you guys, it's about the community, as you said. So I think I'd like to congratulate you, and since we're, we're realizing this fact that you, know, you guys are, uh, had that in mind to begin with. I think that that is exactly what happened. I think leading up to um, UAE now last year, uh, in last year's now iteration at uh, Art Dubai, um, Bit 15 was essential. It was, a, it was a very big part of getting the community together. And all of the uh, five um, different platforms that participated, we got together at Bit 15. Bit 15 really sort of extended itself uh, in that nature, very, in a very natural way, and uh, and allowed for conversations to flow, uh, which then continued at the fair as well. Um, now, I think, Yanni, with that said, I think like maybe this is a good point, a, a good point for us to interject with some images, and um, maybe take a look at uh, um, 
the first uh, the first day you guys opened up the, the uh, your doors and I think what you were saying, Afra, is extremely important that you know this isn't this isn't we you, you guys aren't the first and you guys aren't gonna be the last and, and that's not the aim and that's not the hope. Um, and for everybody to start to kind of like realize uh, what and how um, they can partake um, within this gap, uh, within the spectrum and start to take responsibility for what is needed and what is necessary in the same way that you guys have. Um, I think if we can take a look at uh, the images and maybe go back to the first exhibition, which uh, um, opened its doors the same day we had our, uh, or you guys inaugurated the first, uh, you know, the first day to the public, uh, where I met, uh, you know, all three of you properly, um, and, and so Afra again, um, and just kind of talk about the intentions of that exhibition, what you guys were thinking, why that exhibition took place, um, and then maybe we can go down that trajectory of the other two exhibitions that happened at Bit 15, um, alongside uh, the uh, residencies also, which I think are a very vital part of um, yeah, of of what um, Bit 15 is, but yeah. So I'm sharing my screen. Um, well, this was the first beats that uh, you see before you enter uh, the space. And I think it was a. I missed that piece. Uh, uh, it's been Maury <laughs> Jones. Ben Murray uh, Jones. He's a student. He at that time he was a student at um, NYU. 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 Visual yeah. Arts Program, and his research was about the public water um, dispensers at in around Abu Dhabi. So he was documenting those uh, water fountains, and his show was titled Sabil, which is um, in Arabic means. Uh, how do you translate to be? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's open for public, and we wanted to <laughs> public water. <laughs> public water. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and, yeah, it's a uh, photograph that, mounted on yeah. a board. Yeah, and that was installed outside of the yeah. house. Uh, the entrance. The entrance. And that begins. I think that that image uh, begins to define what Bay Fifteen is. It's like this public space, open. Water open for public, you know, like it's 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 an essential element for the creative zany. Um, I wanted to put it outside, outside, like where it's usually placed, where you would usually see it. But we were worried our our neighbors would be bothered. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah. So this <laughs> is our first show. This is a sort of a. Uh, a view of the whole uh, gallery, and then and I can't navigate. With, with the first show, we wanted uh, to extend the invitation to the community. It wasn't really about any you know, us having uh, a show of our work within the gallery. And I think you know, we all work together in selecting different mediums, different artists, generations, backgrounds, uh, and kind of have, um, so each artist would like invite their uh, group, you know, of connection and that's how, and we build to, uh, we start to build the community together. So the first piece on the right uh, is by Saeed Al-Madani, it's a print, Afra, you know more about it. Yeah, it was a print. So Saeed um, uh, was at the time uh, doing his Emmy in uh, RCA in London and uh, in printmaking. And he was working on these pieces um, that he did uh, prints. And we had also another piece that was uh, uh, experimenting with uh, chemicals on uh, copper plates. And I thought that was interesting. And it was really interesting because he sent us the piece, if you see, it, it's like creased. Um, it has like these folds and they're beautiful in real life. And he actually sent it to us in, in the mail, like from London, it was amazing. But I think what's more important to talk about here is that when we 
came together to decide about what will our first exhibition be and like who would be included in this first exhibition and why are we starting the i'm just saying like rolling out questions that we had um for ourselves what uh why are we starting with an exhibition um and if we don't want to identify as a gallery then why are we opening with an exhibition um would that be misleading would that be confusing for people and like um we, we had a lot of back and forth about this idea do we open with an exhibition or just like you know open studios but we did have open studios when we had the exhibition as well um we settled on having an exhibition and we settled on deciding um we each nominated a group of artists and then we filtered them down but it was the 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 criteria was that we wanted through this exhibition to show the type of artists individuals from different generations that we are interested in um, interacting with. That Beit 15 is sort of like, um, you know, is, is there for, to represent, to be part of, you know? And that included um, people from different generations, that included artists who were not necessarily in Abu Dhabi or in the UAE. Um, and artists who were living in the UAE, but not really, you don't really hear much about them. And so we had, if you look at the image on the left, uh, um, so the piece on the left, sorry, um, it was by um, Banu Kolak, who is a faculty actually in Zayed University, currently my colleague. At the time, I wasn't a faculty at Zayed. Um, but she's a, she's a faculty at the Arts College. And it was the first time that I see her work. Um, and then this also was a piece by uh, Russell Hamilton, who is also a faculty, who was my uh, faculty when I was an undergrad at Zayed. And then Lamia Gargash, Hashil, you can talk about Lamia. Yeah, Lamia Gargash, Hamad Ahmed Ibrahim, Al Anud Al Abedli. Al Anud Al Abedli. And then inside there is like a video yeah. piece by Nijam Al Ghanem. And. Uh, and Mohammed Mazrui, we showed a video piece as well. Yeah, as we well. showed the video piece from Mohammed Mazrui. Yeah. Um, Mohammed Ahmed Ibrahim. The, um, these are Mohammed the, Ahmed Ibrahim. And we had also the seated man over here. We also Ali had like at the side um, um, yeah. a piece that was sent also from uh, an artist in Turkey who also Turkey. happened to have also a collective uh, um, of, uh, of his own in Turkey. And yes. they sent us also a piece to, uh, to um, that we also exhibited in this exhibition. Yeah. And Lama, so, Lama Ramo. There was like a, This uh, was Najum al Ghanim on the right. That was something we never have seen before. And it was a piece that she created when she was studying in the US in the 90s. Oh, you can't see my screen? Hold on. No. Whoops. We've I've been pointing the whole time. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> Technical issues. Pause sharing. Um, we're stuck still. We, I think, okay, we spoke right, about the work, but off. the image wasn't moving. Yeah. Um, I apologize for that. Hold on. Um, I think it's very, very interesting and very important. Yeah, I was moving through the images. So, like, yeah. um, I was pointing at this is Banu. Yeah. This is yeah. Russell Hamilton, Lamia Gargash, and then Muhammad Ahmed Ibrahim. There's Anud Al Abedli, and then moving forward, yeah, Alia Zaal, yeah. and another Sidi Muhammad Ahmed Ibrahim, and then there's another Banu here. Um, this is the piece that I was referring to by Nijum Al Ghanim on the right, uh, the rice sack. It was actually a piece that she created um, mm -hmm. while she was studying in the U.S. in the 90s. Yeah, her undergrad. An undergrad, yeah. Anud yeah. um, Al-Abedli, who interacted with the walls with and the, the space. space yeah. And then this brings us to the next show. This is, so this is now your second show. So the first yeah. show really yeah. was looking at uh, the community, the artists that existed around in the UAE, in Abu Dhabi, yeah. uh, 
otherwise would not ever be paired with one another. I mean, it, it's right. very curious, the, the group um, that you guys have uh, curated in this first show. And did the first show uh, um, like uh, affect the thinking for the second show? And was the second show themed uh, or was it sort of open-ended in the same way? No, I think it was, um, we received actually um, a proposal, an idea from Aisha Jama'a and her family. How should you receive that? Maybe talk about Yeah, we were, I think like you can see the connection between the first and the second and the third show, but we don't really, we didn't plan it to don't be that way. It. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's more of a organic hey. flow of yeah. how ideas actually um you know uh, start to connect and the community engaging so Aisha Jama is a friend of uh, Beit 15 and uh, she's always been like part of the conversation and um and she had an idea her and her seven sisters, sisters and, their, and daughters and, and their daughters and her her son they they've been um kind of like working together as a family and producing work collectively. And what's interesting about uh, Beit Jum'a, yeah, and except for Aisha, who is trained as an artist and her daughter, uh, Shok, but the rest of the family members are very intuitive with their practice. And we thought about having the conversation again, like art is yeah, beyond you know, just what we know through uh, the education system. And to highlight that, uh, it was very important for us. So we're showcasing a family coming together, working together, producing work uh, in, 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 in the same medium, but everyone has their own outcome. So you have like this dining table with um, about 13 sculptures made by different uh, family Visual members. Buffet. Was and, it? Uh, huh? Visual buffet. Visual buffet, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and also uh, Shog, who is uh, trained as a fashion designer, and now she moved to like making um, fiber sculptures, and um, and she and it was like connection between her and her aunt, her aunt. Uh, Fatma Jama, who does the sketches, and then Shog translates them into like a larger scale on a quilt or, you know, these uh, sculptures. Beautiful kimonos. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then yeah. it moves actually from um, um, uh, those, um, uh, from Shog's piece into her mother's piece, Aisha Jama, who also translated um, the, the lines and the sketches into, into um, um, uh, a visual book that she created that we had also in the exhibition. So it was all like a connection that they've had as a family uh, working together uh, to create her, the pieces. And this is, was like a live performance. So we took, we took the family and we added a guest uh, with them, which is Isaac Sullivan, uh, uh, video, and, uh, video and sound artist based in Dubai. And we invited him to uh, kind of respond. So uh, Ahmed, uh, Ahmed Fardan, Aisha's son, which uh, you saw he's him. He's in like, culinary uh, school. He's in a culinary school. And he was doing, he's also interested in art and repetition and, um, uh, and performance. So he was like chopping uh, for a dur durational period of time. Uh, cubes of carrots, like literally filling up, you know, these glass uh, jars. And we had the recording device here where Isaac Sullivan downstairs was actually uh, performing uh, a sound piece based on responding. the rhythm of responding uh, to Ahmed's performance. So you can see the whole family is actually interacting with each other. Uh, there is like the guest and, you know, you have the family members uh at home i think that, that this is very fresh like what you guys introduced here because um the institutions are constantly you know uh, 
um, dictating what is considered art um, and, and who is considered an artist and why. And uh, I think for the first time in the Abu Dhabi context uh, and Abu Dhabi history of contemporary art um, through Beit 15, you guys really sort of opened up and broadened that conversation. And you also brought in, uh, which is the magic of Beit 15, you brought in a whole new body of, uh, of people that otherwise would not have access to Beit 15, otherwise would not have been a part of it. And, and that is the following that comes along um, with Beit Jum'ah, and all of the kids and everybody that's involved and all of their friends. And so I think, I think this sort of inclusion is, uh, is very important and you begin to really see it through the, um, through the exhibitions. Um, we we uh, moved from, from this exhibition on to the uh, final exhibition, if I'm correct. Which, yeah, but we also um, had a room during oh, yeah. the Bejum'a exhibition, we had a room that we invited um, Tariq al Ghussain to actually uh, present some of his work. Um, and it was um, in connection with the, the show that he was having at Warehouse 421 at the time, if I'm correct, Fashion Sam? Uh, yeah, yeah. It was side I, by side, like it was during the same time because it was yeah. Abu Dhabi art. It was literally the same the same yeah. day, but yeah. this is a different body of work. Yeah, uh, a different body of work. This is uh, his project in Sawabar. It's Sawabar, yeah, yeah, based on yeah, Sawabar from Kuwait. Um, so we had, yeah, we invited Kuwait him as, uh, as a resident, yeah, to take to him to space, yeah. 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 Work, and work. then um, we moved to um, Currency, which was the last show that we actually had before um, Lockdown. Before, before. <laughs> before, before lockdown, before COVID. <laughs> um, yeah, and so this show was a bit different, but then at the same time, um, still ties in this idea of, you know, the outcomes of having an artist community, the, the sort of like interactions between artists um, when working and living um, within the same like geographical area or like city or studio building and so on. So when I was, um, uh, in the States, um, doing my MFA at RISD. Uh, before I come back, I did this thing where um, exchange, uh, I decided to do exchanges and it's something that artists do a lot, like trades between them. And I was sort of like fascinated because I don't, I, I, I did not know that artists do trades or exchanges at the time. Um, like I did not have that community back home to do such thing, but I actually, um, the only experience I had, which was at SIF where I did, act, I did actually trade some works, but just like sort of seeing that idea and thinking of more about it and like, what does this mean to exchange art or to exchange work and like, um, in my case, uh, I was working with a lot of like large scale or relatively large scale and heavy uh, installation pieces and it was hard to exchange with that. So I just came up with this idea where I created small branches and they were all the same, relatively the same. They're hand built, so each was unique, but um, they're similar in size, um, about 40 or 45 of them. And I started uh, offering my friends and colleagues uh, who were at RISD um, an exchange uh, in return for, you know, like exchange for the branch. Um, and it was really interesting, the whole process of like going to people's studios, um, showing them the branches, having them pick, and then they would sort of like value this branch or like, in a, in a way decide what they could give me in return, you know? And I was fascinated by that, I, by that whole like 
um, moment and, 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 and how people were responding to that. But also um, in response, like people, I, I only gave people one sort of like incentive. I told them that I make, I'll do my best to exhibit and showcase this work. And so there was like a bit of an incentive and motivation for people to like also think about what to give me. Um, and, and as you see, like basically the exhibition, um, this is the exhibition that you see on the screen. These are the works that I um, collected from those exchanges. And so thinking about that idea um, and looking at the branch as a form of an artist's currency um, and, and that was like, that was sort of like the reason why all these works come together. But then when I, when we put up the show and I looked at the works, I realized that, you know, there are a lot of, they're so different. Each piece is so different and has, there are different themes, different, you know, mediums, but there's somehow this energy that you can sense in this space that brings them all together and you can feel like there is something in common between these people. Um, and, I, and, and you'll see a lot of um, moments where the works, um, you sort of like see how artists kind of like learn from each other when, we're, when they're working within the same space. Um, you'll see people from, like I had, people from the ceramics department give me photographs and people from the ceramics department give me glass or people from like digital plus media give me glass as well. And like, so all this like different sort of like um, crossovers between disciplines. And I thought that that's um, a great um, example to put in beat 15. When I brought back this, work i was thinking maybe i'll show it in the university maybe i'll show it in an institution to like for it to become like this educational um tool but then i the more i thought about it i thought i think that like the best place to put it was bait 15 because it speaks for the community it speaks for everything that is happening right now and i also think sheds light on the importance of the time right now and collecting in relationship to collecting. Absolutely. And I, th I think it's, you know, it's also a part of like, um, like this, the sense of exchange is a part of what the, the ethics of Bait 15 is. Um, I think that this is uh, maybe a, a good way to sort of piggyback um, um, out, of, uh, out of just exhibitions and looking at them and into also the residency programs that you guys have, which involve exchange, which involve these conversations um, that, that, are, that are necessary. And I feel like this exhibition, uh, you know, I saw it a few times and um, I really enjoyed it. This is actually my favorite piece here in the very back. Uh, and, uh, and I think just the scale and, and how to, to um, discuss value is a very, it's very interesting when you remove um, the, the finances of things, like when you remove monetary uh, value and you allow it to exist just on a, on a sentimental basis. Yeah, and you, how, how do you exchange an artwork for an artwork? And, and, and I feel like this sort of very human uh, connection is something that binds Beit 15 with the community and, and uh, which, which you can kind of um, thread out of this exhibition as well. Um, I think uh, if you guys have, um, if you guys would like, I need to maybe discuss a little bit further uh, about the, the residency programs that you guys have. I'm also just keeping an eye uh, on the time because I feel like we could go on. Um, <laughs> We have uh, 10 more minutes um, before our, our hour um, is up. And um, uh, I think it's, it's a, a vital point for us to discuss um, the residencies and like, then just to kind of conclude um, where, you know, where Beit 15 is at, what it looks forward to, um, to achieving or seeing, uh, and, and how it's uh, also looking to respond as a space um, once, uh, you know, I, I know in Dubai, the world has, uh, 
you know, uh, gone back to normal, let's say. And uh, in Abu Dhabi, we still have uh, a lot of restrictions. And uh, I'm just curious to know where Beit 15 is uh, throughout this entire crazy that we, uh, we've experienced um, in, t in 2020. I'm just going to scroll through the photos. Uh, sorry, Mitha, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to scroll through the photos till we get to residents yeah. and community, but you guys can go ahead and talk. So part of, like, as we discussed before, part of us um, um, uh, sharing the space with the community and other creatives um, um, uh, was the idea of having um, or including uh, a residence uh, space or a uh, um, a space for other creatives to uh, come and, and um, you know, uh, produce work and engage in, in conversation and engage uh, with other artists. So it was important to us to actually, like, as, as little space as we have, like, it was actually one of our priorities to actually spare space um, uh, for a resident um, uh, to, to come and, and spend more time or as much time as they want in the space and produce work. Um, so, um, uh, so we did that. I remember like our first, um, um, our first uh, resident, actually we did go through um, a list of names. We, we had um, that thought out like, you know, uh, uh, very carefully we we actually I think we also got like um, them to send portfolios and 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 uh, we went through the whole you know um, uh, you know choosing who uh, would be our first um, resident uh, but then when um, um, I think like uh, when time passed we just let it be like not like you know Na uh, naturally like people would call us wanting a space and we would be like you know we have a space you can come at any time and 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 uh, well, we'd offer them a, uh, a residence space so um it, it it's it's kind of now like a pretty much like an an open invitation for anyone that needs a space and if when we have a space we just you know open our doors for them um that's yeah, that's very that's very much the the the, the overall attitude I think one would like yeah. to say uh, what we've seen and also just kind of shed light uh, on the library a little bit before we move on to you know bit fifteen during the current uh, uh, pandemic and 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 in the future what it imagines um, itself to um, to become I think. The library also is uh, is inherited. I think that's very important for us to mention, uh, both by Mohammed Mazrouri and Barat Hussein. And then with time, the community just started to give uh, books and, and add to this space. Um, and, and this space is like almost like the sacred space or like the, 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 the place of worship, let's say, was within mm -hmm. where, you know. Uh, Can you see it on the screen? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, you know, where conversations are had, where, yeah, Hashid and I realized you know, almost an entire exhibition uh, by sitting in the space um, where, you know, I've had various discussions with both Afra and Meta about their work, about next steps, um, where I've come to realize a lot of things and, and met a lot of people. And I feel like, um, this is where most of the congregations uh, uh, take place uh, within the library. And, um, and this is what we're all missing uh, a lot. I mean, I'm, I'm in com conversation with my friends who are uh, majority creatives uh, in, in Rabi and in the UAE and uh, very like, uh, holistic and overall uh, view. But the ones in Abu Dhabi, it's like the first thing they want to do is go back to Bit 15. The first thing they want to do is uh, is be in that sort of that like I, I described it as like a beating heart and just to be a part of that you know like part of that um, that drum you know and and, and that that energy and um, uh, my first outing was to be 15 after uh, I quarantined myself for over three months and and it's and it's an essential part and I'm just curious to see maybe we can conclude. 
um, the session by sort of discussing where you guys are at, what you guys have in mind, uh, whether it's an, whether it's exhibitions or talks or public programming or nothing at all. Uh, but but where uh, where and what does um, Beit and and how will Beit fifteen embody this time that we are in, and how will it um, extend its space uh, and its presence and its energy um, to the wider community? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, with the just going back with the resident uh, artists and residents part, like yes, we have any a very specific. Uh, let's say, um, titles for that. But then we have lots of friends who just actually come in to work for a short period of time and then leave. So we don't, yeah, I mean, our door is very- think interns. Yeah, the interns who come, Maha Jarallah, who's, who's just graduated from uh, Zaid University. She was working in her senior project there. So we have like um, a very, uh, like um, how to say, like a loose definition of the residency part. Like, and at some point we converted the gallery space downstairs into, into just a, we had four artists working together at the same time, trying to build a community. And that was a show on its own also. Any people actually coming and walking in to see studio spaces. Uh, I think that was very important to uh, engage with the community. Uh, speaking that about was the, actually language, during the Art Dubai hashtag. Art Dubai, yes, David and Lena, Ahmed Buhleg and Afra Swedi. Uh, with the live, in regards to the library, uh, we decided that we it's uh, it's about time to have a a digital uh, um, inventory uh, inventory of the database, uh, database okay, of yeah. the yeah. books. Yeah. Because we also received another 24 boxes from <laughs> Muhammad al mazrui <laughs> last two weeks ago, uh, full of books. Uh, and we, in, uh, um, uh, we invited an intern, or, or um, an intern exactly from Zaid University who's gonna sit and categorize these books and then have that on our website so anyone can know what, what is actually in the, uh, in the library. And uh, in terms of like shows and programs, maybe, I think we're taking a break for this summer. Afra is working on uh, in the gallery space. Last year, I was working on the, on uh, the solo show from the gallery this, this summer, Afra's there. So it's, it's also like very dynamic and very open, but hopefully our next show will be in November. Uh, and we're thinking about it, yeah, and stay. Stay tuned, as, as they say. Fantastic. Fantastic. This, uh, this has been incredible, as always, talking to the three of you. I think if you guys have any final points you want to make, we can make them now. Otherwise, we can wrap up and we'll close, close off this conversation with a very wonderful picture of uh, all of us at our Dubai last The pyramid. <laughs> never ever believed that there was going to be such a time, uh, such a testing time, such as uh, the time we are in, um, and all of us on top of the bed that uh, really created a lot of, um, a lot of good noise uh, at our Dubai last year, um, and I look forward to having you guys be a part of um, Golf Now in the future, um, and Trauma by next year. Uh, and to see how we can um, continue this dynamic sort of relationship um, with Beit 15. And thank you. Uh, I appreciate your time. Oh, yeah. I oh, hope you guys have enjoyed it as much as I did. Yes. Oh, thank yeah. you. And <laughs> thank, thank uh, like special thanks to our Dubai to actually starting this conversation and uh, realizing the importance of nonprofit platforms participate in art fairs and allowing us to uh, be present uh, there and now also and that's very important and thank you Munira for your support and believing in us and our mission and you know uh, yeah thank, thank you. you absolutely thank you thank you so much thank you absolutely.
All right, guys. See you in Beit 15. <laughs> See you after the quarantine. <laughs>